Hello all of you, Rhys Tekes and Truth Seekers to Podcast Life The Butterfield and welcome to my big, awesome, amazing hotel room. This is the actually width of the, my room. It's small, but it's beautifully positioned. I already done the review of hotel, so I'll not repeat myself. However, every time when I walk in this room, that reminds me of the one of the speeches given to men I truly admire, men who was always like a sort of uh, the light in my life, uh, Sylvester Stallone. And he said when he started his career that he will sit on his bed with one arm, he will be able to open the window, a second one to open or close the door. This one is a little bit bigger. It's more modern and everything else. It's a hotel room and it's a beautiful hotel and a beautiful position. But this is the only place in this hotel I can sit and do the podcast for you guys to share my experience. So today it's my day number 12 of 21 days of traveling across the five countries and continents. My ultimate uh, visit will be Germany. Germany is a place where I'm gonna stay the most time, where I'm gonna cover a lot of things from Cold War, from espionage, from uh, spying, you know, between the CIA and the uh, Stasi. I'm gonna uncover a lot of layers, why Stasi was so successful and why the people are still in Germany have reminiscence of old days of the East Germany. Maybe you didn't know this, but let's go start today, day in chronological order. Amazing breakfast. They say the breakfast decide what day is gonna look like. Well, I disagree. I already covered this one. I think we should have the easy and light breakfast. Here, breakfast in France reminds me of, again, of my childhood. The bacon and eggs looks exactly as I grow up. <laughs> the hard boiled eggs, uh, the, the yogurt, the, the measly and all these things. It's amazing. If my father is alive and sees that we're eating the measly and the yogurt, he will, he will kill everybody. You know why? Because this is for the rich people. Actually, he's in the 80s for him, was for the rich people. So today I had a plan to visit two very strongly symbolic places uh, relating to the, our history, relating to the things we see on TV today as well. One of the movie, John Wick. So I'm gonna come to this a little bit later. So one of the places I wanted to visit is the Louvre Museum and Saint Eustache Church. However, before I go there, I want to do some observation. How French they are lucky as a nation. The moment I arrived in France, I saw the society which is very, very national awakened. They are very proud who they are. Wherever you go, you see the national French flag. It's flying high, you know what I mean? That's, 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 a, that's a symbol I like to see in one country. Every government building, even private buildings, they're all in a French flag, national flag. It's everywhere. It's a beautiful thing it is to see because now it's coming Olympic Games. So, so what they're doing, Paris is a very old city. And when I say old city, architecturally, it's been developed in the last 700, 800 years. And this city was continuously growing around the old city Paris, which is where we are right now, within the walls, what they call it where the fortress was. So it's all these buildings has been built big, tall, wide, but the, the architecture, the monuments, the, the statues, what they make those buildings very visible. So what it is, you know, when you have the statues around the buildings or the bridges, they are being covered in a, in a golden paint, which then you see the in the background, the French flag and, you know, golden roof or golden statue, you know, so-called gold, but it's, it's paint, you know, and then you see that dark sky or the, the light blue sky. I would say dark sky because it was raining last couple of days here in the meantime. So it's that national pride. It's everywhere. Then second thing it is, I was saying to people, when I was in military intelligence, the first thing we learned how the other countries look like. So the easiest way to say how the other countries looks like, I would have uh, situation country it is, is to see how their police and the armed forces look like on the street. French police dressed very well. They are very, very 
sharp looking, you know, the, the, the males and females police officers, they're very approachable, easy to talk to them, but they don't give nobody says or do something against their country. I saw yesterday the people are flying the flags and, you know, different, you know, different politi political agenda. No, no, you can't do this in France. We are a respective uh, liberties, but you can't put your flags in the places where they don't belong. So that's a, that national pride. Then you have the military on the streets as well, which is also only in Singapore. And that's why they're exercising that extra layer of protection. Even I was being told by the, my host here, in France, they are still on a level five, the highest level of terrorist threat. So they never gone down since the last terrorist attack. Now, that's what I try to bring to you. In France, it's national pride. The secondly, the people, People uh, look happier, they look more brighter, even that I was being told that uh, they've been smashed by the COVID-18, but uh, the fashion, the, 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 how they look like, how they behave, it's just amazing. I just, I was amazed. They are watching the news here, you know, they're not dark news as I see in Australia. In Australia, everything is like gloom and doom, it's apocalyptic. Although the news here, depicting the news I'm seeing across the globe, well, when I'm back in Australia over there, it's everything it's opposite what they're saying here. But that's for some other time. The fact it is, the French are very proud people. They love their country. They, they display this everywhere. It is a little bit chaotic. You need to be prepared because in France is what? Olympic Games in two months and everything is building. It's a lot of building. So guys, if you come into Paris, I want you to uh, take a note on, as well as something else. All these small businesses I'm seeing, pastry shops, the, the, the coffee shops, the sushi shops, uh, the, the cake shops, the small businesses, even the tailors, on, as list goes on, the precision and the pride on their product and services, it's impeccable. I didn't saw this in Australia. That level of pride of what they're doing and how they're presenting it's just amazing you can be inspired by this just by coming in paris and walking as i walk every afternoon to see those things how they're doing why they're doing and every time when i speak with somebody well when i try to speak on english because some for some other reason they don't like english people they, i was not told why but they don't like them the fact it is you can see how they're doing things. Only what you need to do is to copy them. Nothing more, nothing less.